Hello, today is the 15th of December 2021 and uh, I would like to speak about faith, salvation, life and uh, sin. It is written in John chapter 3 verse 16. John chapter 3 verse 16. For so God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life so to be to have everlasting life we need to believe in Jesus that is the condition to believe in Jesus is the condition to have eternal life to be saved that's it when we believe, we receive life. When we believe, we are saved. And then I've already touched on faith, on believing, on salvation, on salvation and life. In just this one verse. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. So whoever, that was verse 17, so whoever believes in Jesus are not condemned. So those who are believing in Jesus, they're in Christ, actually. If we believe in Jesus, we are in Christ. And there is no condemnation to him that is in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now it's written in John chapter 16, verse 9. Uh, <clears throat> verse 8 and 9. And when he has come, the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world of sin, and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. So, the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin because they don't believe in Jesus. So, <clears throat> if we're saved, if we believe, and if there is no condemnation if we believe, then there is only one sin, and that is not to believe. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And maybe I could just stop here, because I have touched into everything. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but now we're going to touch into this a little more. What does it mean to believe? That is the essential uh, thing to know. What does it mean to believe? <clears throat> we can read Mark 1.15. Mark 1.15. No, after John uh, was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel <coughs> of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So to believe in the gospel, we need to repent. Therefore, to believe is uh, something more than just to have faith in Jesus that he died on the cross for us, for our sin. <laughs> to believe is more. And I'm going to show you that to believe is to be faithful to Jesus. It's to be committed to him. It's to say yes to him with all your heart. It is almost like how you say yes in a marriage. 
you promise to be faithful. <clears throat> but the promise does not make us perfect. Nobody that who gets married are perfect in person. But their yes, their faithfulness need to be perfect. They need to do that with all their heart. They need to repent from dating other women or other men, whoever is getting married, uh, and be committed to the one they're going to marry. That is important. Without that, you can't get married. So, to believe in Jesus is to say yes to Him, to be faithful to Him. And to be faithful to Jesus is to be faithful to His Word, is to be committed to keep the Word of God. 1 John 2, 3-5 First <clears throat> John 2, 3-5 Now by this we know that we know Him, if we keep His commandments. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. But by this we know that we are in him. So, this talks about faithfulness. It does not talk about perfection, but faithfulness. But whoever keeps his word, it's about keeping his word. To keep his commandment is to keep his word. It's to be faithful to the word, to the truth of the word of God. When we are faithful to his word, then we are in him. When we are faithful to his word with all our heart, then we are in, it, in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk... No, that was wrong. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. When we make a decision to be faithful to Jesus with all our heart, we receive the love of Christ. We enter into Christ. Christ enters into us and we receive the love of the Father. That's what happens. So, to believe in Jesus is to receive love for the truth. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9-12 2 Thessalonians 2, 9-12 The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So, to believe in Jesus is to believe the truth. To believe in Jesus is to be faithful to the truth. It's to be committed to the truth. It's to say yes to, to the truth. It's to receive love for the truth. It's to make a decision to be faithful to the truth. To love Jesus is to be faithful to Him. Love is not a feeling. Love is not a... Emotions, love is a decision to be faithful. That is what love really is. And that uh, what we promise in a marriage, we promise to love each other and to be faithful to each other in good and evil days. So, <clears throat> to believe in Jesus, we can read in John chapter 10, verse 26 to 28. John chapter 10, verse 26 to 28. But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, 
and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. So this is what it is to believe, <clears throat> is to hear the voice of God and to follow Him. So when we receive faith for, in Jesus, that He died on the cross, that He is God who became man, died on the cross for, for our sin, when we have faith in that, full assurance of that, we make a decision to follow Him with all our heart. That doesn't make us perfect, but we are committed. That is to believe. And when we believe with all our heart, when we repent with all our heart to follow Jesus, then we receive eternal life. Just like it's written here. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Then we receive the love of the Father, the love of Christ. Hallelujah. But before we believe, we need, of course, to have full assurance of what Jesus did for us. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So God, we can believe after we have faith in Him. So what this is all about, it's, it's, uh, to believe is to have a good heart, or not to have a good heart. John 6 22 to 23. 22 to 23. I think it is right. Uh, no, Matthew. Not John 6. Matthew. Matthew 6. 22 to 23. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? So this must be talking about the light of our heart. Or the eye of our heart. When the eye of our heart, when our intention, when our faithfulness is good, when we are good, then our whole body becomes full of light. Then we receive the righteousness of God and we are saved. And we receive eternal life. We receive the love of the Father. Then we are in Christ. Hallelujah. I will read Romans 3.22. Romans 3.22. Even the righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference. The righteousness of God, through faith, the righteousness of God, or the life of God, or the love of God, of the love of the Father, we receive through faith, through having full assurance, through hearing the voice of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. It comes to those who believe, because faith without action is death. We have to believe to have life. And we can read Hebrew 11.6. Hebrew 11.6. But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So, without faith, we cannot believe. But with faith, we can make a decision to follow Jesus. When we do that with all our heart, then we receive eternal life. 
and we will have the love of the Father in our heart. Hallelujah. So when we believe, we receive eternal life. We just touched that. We receive righteousness. We can read Ephesians 2, 8-10. Ephesians 2, 8-10. Mm. Hallelujah. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Through faith, and that not of yourself, yourselves. It's the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So we receive grace through faith. But it's unto everyone who believe, as it's written in Romans 3.22. For by grace you have. Grace you receive when we believe. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And then we receive grace as a gift. Not because of our works, because we are perfect, because we do this or that. No, we receive grace because we believe. Because of our faithfulness to Christ. So sin is not about works. Sin is about Believing. We sin when we do not believe, when we are not faithful, when we are not committed with all our heart. We can do many things, many f wrong works, but if our commitment to God is complete and full, there is no sin, then the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all sin, from all, everything that comes from the sin nature. <coughs> When we believe in Jesus, then God will work in us to will and to do according to His pleasure. And the grace of God will work in us. We can read some scriptures here. John 7.38 We can read John 7.38 Hallelujah! Hallelujah! John 7, 38. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Amen. Out of his heart, the life of God has entered the heart of those who believe. And from a heart like that, for those who walk faithfully with Jesus, who are committed to his word, from, from the heart of those people will flow rivers of living water. That's the promise. If that's not so, we need to check our heart. And T and Philippians 2.13. Philippians 2.13. <clears throat> for it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. And then we can read Titus 2.11-12. Titus 2, 11 to 12. Let's see. There we go. Titus 2, 11 to 12. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present day. When we believe in Jesus, then we have the life of God, then we have the Holy Spirit, we will receive the Holy Spirit. Then God will work in us, both the will and to do according to His pleasure. Then grace will work, grace will be within us, and grace will teach us and nurture us. Teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. So we would live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. The love of the Father, the grace of God, the life of God will teach us and work in us to nurture us, to teach us, to lead us, to learn, teach us how to live. We will, in a way, we will receive a new heart. 
where the desire of God, where we will desire new things. Not like the world, to desire the lust of the flesh, to satisfy the lust of the flesh, evil desire holiness. We will desire denying ungodliness and worldly lust. And we will decide to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. That's something God will work in us. He will work in us by His power. It's written in Isaiah 58, 11. Isaiah 58, 11. The Lord will guide you continually. Hallelujah. He will guide us continually. That's the promise. From within. And Psalm 25, 9 till 14. Psalm 25. Psalm 25, 9 till 14. The humble he guides in justice, and the hum humble he teaches his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name is sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Who is the man that fears the Lord? He shall teach, he teach in the way he chooses. He shall, he teach in the way he chooses. Who is the man that fears the Lord? To fear God is to hate evil. To fear God is another way to say to believe in Jesus. Who is the man who fears the Lord? He shall he teach in the way he chooses. That was verse 12. So, God will teach us the way we should walk. That is the promise. God will work in us to lead us. Hallelujah. To the still waters, on the ways of righteousness. By the power of God. It's not in our power, but by the power of God. So it's not about being perfect in works. God is looking for faithfulness. And then God will work in us to do His will. By His power. It's not something we should accomplish in our own power. And we do not sin if we do mistakes because we didn't have the power from God to do something. If we do something we hate, it's written in Romans 7, then it's no longer us doing it, but sin in us. Because we have a faith, we have a thing we struggle with after we become Christian, and that's the old man. The old man is something God wants us to put off by his power. We are captured in a body with sin and death in its members. But Jesus crucified this old man so that we can now put it off by his power and put on the new man, Christ. So to be a Christian is not to be perfect in works. It's only about being faithful to the truth. It is to say yes to Jesus with all our heart, with a full heart. It is to repent from walking after the flesh to walk after the Spirit. It's to repent from, to say it another way, it's to repent 
from being faithful to the flesh and to the lust of the flesh to be faithful to the Spirit, to the truth, to Christ. Hallelujah! Romans 8, 1 to 4. Romans 8, 1 to 4. Or we just verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. The righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us because God is working in us to will and to do. I think it's Galatians 2.20 also we should read. Galatians 2.20 Hallelujah. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which, which I now live in, flesh, in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. I do not, and then verse 21, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, or through the works of the law, or through perfection, or through works, then Christ died in vain. Righteousness comes by faithfulness, not by works. And that's important to know. Sin is only if we do not believe in Him. We only sin against God if you are not committed to Him. Hallelujah. So we can read <clears throat> Ephesians 2, 8-10 again. Ephesians 2, 8-10. For by grace you have been saved, through faith, and that's not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Praise the name of Jesus. Everyone who believes with all their heart will be saved. Act 8.37 Act 8.37 then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, it's about uh, Philip and, uh, and uh, the, um, he met an Enoch on the way, uh, on the way, on the road. And um, then verse 36, now as they went down the road, they came to some water and the Enoch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? And as we know, we get baptized after we believe. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Hallelujah. Therefore, since we need to believe in Jesus with all our heart, it's also dangerous, it's therefore dangerous to believe in anything else or to be faithful to anything else. Anything 
which demand our faithfulness or to make will make us demand us to make some kind of covenant is dangerous this could be what we often call churches religious organizations or groups or ministries that are demanding membership faithfulness commitment they're dangerous because they may steal away our commitment to Christ and it's dangerous for us to be committed to the flesh or to the world we cannot commit to the world we cannot love the world and Christ at the same time we need to be committed to Jesus with all our heart we need to believe in Jesus with all our heart we need to love Jesus with all our heart we can read 1st John First John 2, 15 till 16. <clears throat> Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away the lust of it but he who does the will of God abides forever he who is fully committed to the will of God to follow Christ will abide forever but who he who is committed to the flesh to the lust of the flesh to the lust of the eyes to groups and denominations and ministries and what is falsely being called churches who give their commitment to it, they're in danger. Love not the world, because if you love the world, you don't love Jesus with all the heart. And then the love of the Father will not enter your heart. You will not have the life of God, you will not have the, the living water. God will not stop working in you to will and to do according to His will. He may still work in you, but you have denied Him by not being committed to do His will. So, uh, so we must not give the flesh of the world our faithfulness. Only Christ. We only are we are only faithful to Christ and what is according to His will. That is what we're committing to. Hallelujah. There are two fallacies in this. There are some people who believe in grace only. If you believe that Jesus, or if you have faith in Jesus, that he died on a cross, and he took our sin on himself, and you just accept that then you're saved and then you have the grace of God but that's wrong we are not called to just accept what Jesus did we are called to follow him be committed to his word to the truth to just accept it as a dead faith we don't we are not saved by dead faith if you don't repent and believe in the gospel we will not be saved so that's a fallacy. People who are teaching grace only, you're, you're saved by stretching up your hand and say, hey, I accept Jesus. No, you're not saved unless you repent and follow Him. And you commit to Him and are faithful to Him alone. To His Word, to the truth. And then there is another fallacy. And that is people who believe that you've made, been made righteous by works. They, they preach that this is sin, that is sin, it's sin, this is sin, and you have to ask God to forgive you a hundred times a day. That is to live according to the works of the law, 
of Moses. And then you fall out of grace. You fall out of grace. Because you are you are committed to works. And if you are not able to perform. Then you sin. Against God. And you need to ask him to forgive you. That is to believe in sin. In a totally different way. That's a different gospel than the gospel of Christ. Then you receive righteousness by, righteousness by your own perfection, not by the grace of God, not by faith. Not, then, then, then righteousness is not a gift anymore. It's something you earn because of your good works that you have kept. And many people, they feel very righteous if they have been able to perform holiness for a certain period of time they feel righteous but that is their own righteousness it is not the righteousness of God we can read Galatians 2 16 Galatians 2 16 that a man is not justified by the works of the law but by faith in Jesus Christ even we even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law for the works of the law no flesh for by the works of the law no flesh shall be justified Hallelujah, that is the truth. Be justified by faith unto everyone who believe. Praise the name.